hair is a mess today. Oh my god. I'm gonna stick with it though. It's uh for my job. I had to be in a pool and the chlorine messed up my hair. Love it. Thank you. Uh kid dumped chlorine on my hair, so now it's messed and I haven't had the chance to take a shower. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Last Duck Dundies Podcast, the best ep- episode, the best podcast in my mind. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, where are the guests? What happened last week? Um, I got super busy. <laughs> Basically, it. So I did say podcast episodes are going to come out every other week. Uh, it was starting last week. Um, but I got super busy with everything. I got super busy with life. Um, to be fair, it's been so busy that I'm recording this the day it's supposed to be up. So do with that as you wish. So the Let's Talk Chinese podcast, of course, the podcast was hosted by me, Chicken Tendy, Chicken Gaming, Tendy, Chicken, whatever you want to call me. I don't really care. Uh, and before we get into this, can I just ask one thing? One little thing, please, pretty please. Can I ask for a follow? A subscribe, whatever you're watching this on. It's free. What else is free? Uh, also, last time since I've uploaded the podcast, we've hit a thousand subscribers. So I appreciate everyone who's subscribed, who's watching this. Uh, but yeah, can I just ask for a subscription, a follow, followage, whatever platform you're listening on, uh, and also check out the other platforms. Platforms that the podcast is on is the oh my god, what is it on, bro? It's on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, and our iHeartRadio. So if you have any of those platforms, go check them out. Go toss us a follow. It's free. Why not? I'm not asking for you to pay for things. I could. Give me 40 bucks. I'll be rich. Anyways, so one thing that we I wanted to talk about, a couple topics in this uh this this podcast, the Tendy Talks podcast, for those who don't know, this episode is where Tendy Talks. I am trying to get more guests on, but it is very hard because I burned through all of them within the first 10 episodes. Also, episode 10 is episode 10. But uh, yeah, I've burned through a lot of guests within 10 episodes. So I wasn't really smart. I was too excited. And now I'm reaping the consequences. So we'll see how this goes from there. So starting out. The first topic I want to bring back or bring up is why I brought back the podcast. I thought this would be a really cool idea. I touched on it a little bit uh, in the first ever or first ever rebrand back ep- first podcast episode. I'm starting as this is a whole new kind of podcast. Um, there's a two, two part of this. Why did I bring it back and how do you start a podcast? Um, so... Why did I bring it back? The The main reason was I wanted a series that I can continuously expand on. I was listening to a lot of podcasts at the time. And that meant that I wanted to start a podcast like everyone else. Because I'm not original. However, I thought it would be fun. A fun little side project. Something that I can kind of keep continuously uploading uh, every now and then. Or every week, and then now it's every other week. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I wanted to start it, and I wanted to bring it back. And I had a couple people over the last couple of years ask me, "Hey, are we bringing it back? I know you had it. Is it coming back? Can we bring it back?" And I was like, originally I said no. The original Let's Talk Tennis podcast was a live stream. I quickly learned that live streaming a podcast, as cool of an idea as it might be, it is also the one of the worst ideas you can do for a podcast. And the reason is, the reason is, there's so much that has to go right, and you have to control other people. Now, if I have someone on the podcast who goes on a tangent about politics or whatever, and it's live streamed, I can't cut that out. If I have someone say something on the podcast that might say, you know, something kind of offensive that shouldn't be on a podcast, I can't cut that out. If I have someone say something that's, you know, the podcast goes bad, people make fun, you know, I can't stop it as easy and kind of just say we're not using it. The idea of a chat idea, the, the, the idea of a chat being a communication tool was 
kind of cool. I didn't mind that. But I also had to rely on, well, this was back uh, two years ago. Yeah, I've been doing YouTube for almost, for over three years. It's weird to think, weird to think. Um, it was 50 subscribers, so small base alone. Only YouTube and only live stream. And that meant that it would be more difficult to get guests, get topics, get this and that. I could bring up back a couple topics that I had, but honestly, I don't want to go through the old videos. And a lot of people, I don't think, understood that. Another reason I wanted to bring back the podcast is because it did end on a pretty bad note. The la if you were there, if you've been there from when I had 50, subscri 50 to 100 subscribers and you watched that last or one of the last episodes of the podcast, that was kind of the quit. And, and it was nobody's fault in particular. Oh, man, it's really snowing. Sorry. It's no nobody's fault in really particular. It's kind of a little bit of everyone's fault. Um, bad planning on my end. Some topics that we couldn't let go of, whether that be like we talked about Skylanders for about 20 minutes. And then 10 minutes later, someone else brought up the topic again. And we're like, look, we just talked about it. Uh, we had people who probably should not have been on it, whether that be because they were busy or whether that be because, you know, it was cool for them to be on it, but we couldn't reschedule a time for them to be on it. And it, we, if I totally would have been on it, I uh, totally would have accepted it and rescheduled, but it was not. That was back before I had a face cam and I was like, my face was being honest. My face was not it. So I wanted to bring it back and put it on a good note. Um, I also, we've been doing the Concession Stand podcast for a while. Uh, need to get back on that, but we're pretty inconsistent on that. It's very heavily based on sports news and getting busy and whatever. Um, so I wanted to do that and have it be, I like the idea of talking. And if you know me in person and you're pretty good with me, I like talking. And I wanted an outlet where I could talk because Concession Stand Network now, not podcast. You're walking behind me. Concession Stand Network was, I'm blanking. The original channel was Concession Stand Podcast. It was only for the podcast. Then we started, We did, I did a video on MLB umpires. I'm like, let's change it to a network. Let's let's have different shows and stuff like that. And I wanted to bring other people onto it. That's when we started the Down the Ramp. That was actually after this podcast. Um, But the Tendies podcast, uh, people are texting me. I am recording people. It's about school. I know it's about school. Um, one of the things, lean back here, one of the things was I, there was so much I wanted to talk about, and I had so many ideas pop in my mind, uh, about the podcast, about, you know, just talking, and having a sports podcast and just talking was not the best idea, because your demographic is sports. Um... So I wanted to make this. And I'm like, I already have a past podcast. And it's relatively established. I already have a name and the general logo. What do I need? So I went out and I looked up colorways for blue. And, you know, I'm very big into blue. Uh, and I looked up some other things that I could use and, and I'm like, let's make like radio waves for the podcast. So the logo, if you look back on it, it's radio waves. And it, I don't know if anyone noticed that. It's like the podcast icon where it's the mic with the radio waves. My podcast is the tendies with the radio waves. The background to the, this, the, the back you see around the border or the border you technically see. 
distance of border it's supposed to be like podcast audio waves and it i'm like let's make this a thing and the original logo i had lost i lost it i made it and i'm like okay i lost it so then i had to go back and i redid it in the first time was in illustrator second time was in photoshop and the one in photoshop i stuck with and i kind of been continuously sticking with this branding because i like this branding it's clean it's simple it's what people might enjoy um first episode i'm like let's just bring it back let's make it simple let's talk about something that i am currently in it was in between classes uh so i'm like let's talk about school and mostly because i wanted to talk about my pr teacher which i didn't have an outlet to talk to about so then i've made one second episode was with jonah and i that's when i started reaching out to get guests and that's when i reached out to get a bunch of other people and Joan was the first one that I got. And I was so happy when he said yes and we found a time. And then I started getting some more. I got my friend Momo. I got uh, Ryan, Hank. And I even got my teacher, which was a far reach because she is definitely up there in the school. I'm, She's busy all the time. And I said, hey, are you free a day? I want to record a podcast episode with you and she goes sure send me whatever you want to ask okay send it to her we recorded it at georgian called it a day i got johnny country who is relatively a big person at georgian people know him i want to get a couple other people i've been trying to get my other teacher on it for a while our, our schedules just have not lined up which is not his fault not my fault it's just very bad very in very bad timing um so, and I want to get a couple other people on there. Basically, that's the plan for the podcast. <laughs> now that I told you why I brought it back, here's the next little topic. This won't be a super long episode, by the way. Uh, next little topic is how hard is it to start a podcast? I'm going to break this down into two questions. I'll start with the first question. How hard is it to start a podcast? You need a microphone. That's all you need. It's not hard. You need a microphone. You basically just talk. It's it's not a hard not a hard gig. How hard is it to make a successful podcast? Is my next question. That takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of people. That is where you need to have connections and connections on connections. You need to reach out to people who will reach out back. You need you need a, almost a full production make a successful podcast now i've been lucky i've had a couple big episodes a couple well done episodes i wouldn't call myself super successful in the eyes of most but i'm calling it successful because it's getting relative it's getting views and i talked about this in a little tiktok i made which what is success how do you define success way i define success is is my channel getting bigger am i still getting views am i still growing if I'm not growing and I'm losing subscribers, I'm not getting views in relative to other topics. So if I make an NHL video compared to a podcast, I expect the NHL video to do more than a podcast. It just it makes sense for me at least. If my pod, if I compare my podcast to other podcasts, one has 29 views, the other one has 90 views, I'm going to call that one a little more a little bit more successful than the other one. It's how you define it. But if you're talking about making money and sponsorships and this and that, you are really heavily based off of the eyes of the beholder. There are podcasts out there that probably shouldn't be that big. But are. There's people out there who probably shouldn't be that big, but who are. It's just the way the world works. I would say to be successful in podcasting coming from someone who has a really small podcast <laughs> make sure your branding is consistent make sure you get guests who are willing to talk make sure you are getting guests who are also giving you a good return whether that be in um 
getting a guest that is willing to promote your podcast, getting a guest that's willing to give you insightful information, give you clips, make sure that they're willing to talk. If they're not willing to talk, then that's a problem. If they're willing to sit there and not say anything, that's a problem. But if they're willing to get out there, talk, answer, it, it, it should be where you don't have to ask many questions, they just talk. And I've been both ways on that with before and after the rebrand um, and stuff like that. Um, sorry, people are texting me about assignments that are due. Another thing is just be yourself in a podcast. Pod- you, podcasts are different than recordings. You look at Jinxie's podcast. Jinxie on stream is all over the place. He's a crazy guy. He does crazy things. He says crazy things. His podcast, if you listen to it, he's himself. He's talking about how he became a streamer. It's the behind the scenes. Think of a podcast, if you are a streamer or a content creator, as a behind the scenes. It's for people, it's for people who want to learn more about you. That's the way to see it. Moving on from that. So start a podcast. All you need is a microphone. Start a successful podcast. A lot more than a microphone and a lot more dedication. Um, I'm just going to check those off real quick. I got a notebook. The notebook is back. Um, I have a question for everyone here watching, listening, breathing. Should plastic bags be brought back? And this only became a question for... Like the grocery bags, like plastic grocery bags. Should they be brought back? Should they be given out again? The only reason I am asking this is because I was trying to take out the garbage the other day. And my family, I know a lot of families don't. My family reused them. So we would have them in underneath our sink and we would use them for little garbage bags everywhere. I couldn't find a small garbage bag to use. And I usually would use one of the plastic bags. Now that there's no plastic bags, I had to use a full-size garbage bag because for three little garbages, two bathrooms and a laundry room, like they're tiny, I had to use a huge garbage bag for that. Which brings me to the question, should they be brought back and be given out again? I say yes. Fight me in the comments below, respectfully. But I say yes because people... They leave them everywhere. They get tumbleweeded, whatever. I do know a lot of people who use them, reuse them. It's not a bad thing to reuse a garbage bag or reuse a plastic bag as a garbage bag. Because you are just... I I find that if I use a full-size garbage bag, not only am I losing money, I'm also wasting more. If I'm filling a little plastic bag to the brim with garbage, tying it up, tossing it in the bin... It's not as much waste. Maybe the plastic could be a better plastic. Maybe not. I I find that if I don't have one, I kind of just am like, well, what do I use now? And I don't want to ever use a big garbage bag for a little garbage because that is so much waste. The idea of plastic is bad is a good thing. I'm going to stand by that. The idea of plastic is bad is a good thing. However, and this goes for like plastic straws and cups too. If it is something that you use consistently and without it, it makes your life a lot worse or a lot more difficult or a lot more inconvenient, what is the point of getting rid of it? That might just be me. Same thing like paper versus plastic straws. Paper straws are horrible. You ever put your straw into like a cup and then it bubbles over? You put a plastic or paper straw and it bubbles over. You put a plastic straw, it doesn't do that. The paper, I think the paper has some reaction to it, to the, the, the carbonation, and it spews out soda. She's up pop. She's whatever you're drinking, whatever carbonated drink, but you put a plastic one in there, there's no problem. I have seen people use things like biodegradable plastic straws which dissolve over time 
why is that not more widely available? That's my question. Why is it not more widely available to have biodegradable plastics? I mean, you have cups. You have people or you have companies like Wendy's who use completely plastic cups. You have, which easily could be recycled again. Hell, if you even have a thing where, like, in Wendy's, where you return the cup, it gets washed, it gets whatever, and then you get, like, some of your money back. I know that happens with some boxes. There's a cookie store in, like, the in Europe that have these really fancy boxes, but if you bring the cup back in, you get your money back. Or you get a discount off of whatever you bought last time. Like, beer bottles are the same thing. You get a discount. The you buy, you bring in, you buy, you bring in your old, you buy news, you bring in your old, you buy news, and when, when you buy news, you get a discount. Or you get money, like in store credit towards it. Why can't we do that with like paper cups or plastic cups? Plastic, pa- plastic straws can be biodegradable. Have you ever been drinking a drink and like it's the, the prongs, I call them, it's like the four prongs and the, 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 paper straw gets caught in the prong it's the worst thing ever because then you pull it apart and now it's like you can't get any any of your drink anyways tell me in the comments i'll put a put a a thing on like spotify should plastic items be brought back oh i'm dying here uh last thing to talk about the state of movies in hollywood now Bubbly sponsor me. Um, state of movies in Hollywood. This was asked. Uh, I didn't ask me anything, and Dom was one of the first. This is from Dom. I was going to do ask me anything on this episode, but I thought by the time I actually sat and recorded it, there wasn't enough. But I saw this one. I'm like, this will be a great little topic to talk about. How are Hollywood movies now? Uh, bad. Bad. The quality is good. The, the visual quality is good for most of them. But I want I want to compare a movie like a newer Disney movie compared or newer Pixar compared to old Pixar. If we go back to cars and I want to compare cars to like oh I don't know a new Disney movie. I don't know a new Pixar. Elementals. Two elementals. Both visually stunning movies. The problem is, in 2007, when Cars came out, it should not have been as visually stunning. Elementals now are... It's, it's, it's a decent movie. Um, It's a decent movie. I will give it that. It is a decent movie. However... The movie as a whole, it it's the movie. The movie as a whole, it's good. I didn't mind it. I heard a lot of people say it wasn't the best. I didn't mind it. The visuals were great, except it's twenty twenty. We came twenty twenty three, maybe. Why was Cars so much better when it came to reflections, to shadowing, to this, to that? Why was it so much better? Why, when you get rid of the Avengers? Because their contracts run out. It's not that bad. All of a sudden, you have Madam Web, Morbius, and like Captain Marvel. Actually, was Captain Marvel bad? I don't remember. I didn't watch it. You have these 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 movies that come out, which are not well written movies. They're not good movies. Then you have things like the Batman that comes out from DC. That was a great movie. Very comparative to like the old Heath Ledger, like Christian Bale Batmans. But then you go back to 2016 with Batman versus Superman, and that was a really bad movie. If you guys are new, subscribe. If you guys agree, disagree with my opinions, however you want to say it, and I say respectfully, put in the comments. Do not start making fun of somebody or saying something. Get people mad. 
as I've probably said something to get someone mad, but just be respectful. That's all I ask. Anyways, thank you. Follow. Subscribe. Peace.